So after you've installed Git Bash and you've gone in and you've configured your name and email and those kinds of things, uh, let's start using it to create some repositories. So Git Bash is just uh, a Bash shell, uh, which is derived from Linux. Uh, so inside of here, we're going to use Linux commands. Uh, and for now, we're going to use, it's going to all be terminal based. Uh, we'll use some, uh, a GUI interface later, but for now, we're going to just use terminal commands. So we need to know a few of those terminal commands. And the first one that we need to know is where are we? So we're going to use PWD, Print Working Directory. And I can see that I'm on the C drive. I'm in the users folder. Uh, I'm in the Mike C folder. So the C drive, the users folder, Mike C. I want to be on desktop. Um, whether you're on the lab computers or your personal computer, you're going to have full write access to desktop. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll use it as kind of our standard working area. So I want to change directories onto desktop. So I'm going to CD for change directory and then type the, the directory that I want to go into. Now the nice thing about bash is uh, after you've typed the first couple letters of the directory, you can hit the tab key and it will fill it out. And now I'm on the, I'm in the desktop. And if I PWD, I can see I'm on desktop. If I am using a lab computer, and I type PWD, instead of coming back as C users Mike C, it's going to come back as forward slash H forward slash. It looks like this. I'm on a map drive, right? I'm on my, uh, my home drive. So then I need to change onto the C drive. So first I'll have to CD space forward slash C forward slash. And then when I hit enter, it will put me on the C drive. And after that, I'll have to change into the users folder, uh, my uh, Hawk ID folder, uh, and then into the desktop. So then it would look like CD users. For me, it would look like this. And I hit enter and I'll get here. So two possibilities, if you're on your local computer, or if you're on a lab computer. Um, now that we are in the desktop, uh, I can come over here and I can create a folder called homework zero. And I can see it here. And if I want to see the files, I can ls or list. And I can see there is a homework zero. That's where I want to be. I want to be inside of that folder. So I need to cd space homework zero. And now I can see I'm in homework zero. If I PWD, I can see I'm in homework zero. If I want to get out of homework zero and go back to the desktop, it's CD space dot dot. So CD space dot dot takes me up a level and CD space and then the name of the folder takes me into that folder. All right, so now I'm in homework zero. I'm going to go in here and create a new document and I'll just stick some nonsense in there and I'll come back here uh, now I want to create a repository I want to create a local repository on my computer so to do that, I need to be in the folder that I want to have the repository on. So I make sure I'm in the correct folder. If I am in desktop, then it will make a repository out of everything on my desktop and track everything. I don't want that. So I need to be in the right folder. So I'm in homework zero, which is where I want to be. And I'll get in it, get initialize. And as soon as I do that, I see this master pop up. This is the master branch, the local master. And now in my homework zero, I can see I have a new folder and that new folder is called dot get. Now this dot means it's a hidden file. So if you don't see this, you need to go up to view and check hidden names or hidden items so that you can see it. You also want to check uh, file name extensions because we're going to use that pretty extensively too. This is the repository for the project. 
So if I decide I don't want this repository anymore, I can go in here and I can delete the .git file and everything will go away. All of the commands, uh, I'm sorry, all of the, uh, the commits uh, and uh, all the tracking I've done and all the management I've done will all just go away. So you don't want to do that unless you're absolutely sure that you want to do that. Now that I've got the, the uh, repository um, created, I've got a couple of commands I can use. The first one is git log. And it says that we don't have any commits yet, which is accurate. I haven't done anything. And git status. And git status says that I have an untracked file. Uh, the file status can be untracked, which means Git's not paying any attention to it. Tracked, which means Git is watching it and looking for changes. Modified, which means that it is being tracked and it has been committed, and now it's been modified, so I'll need to commit it again. We can stage it, which means we're kind of making a bundle out of it so that we can commit it. And then the last status is commit. Uh, and then once you've committed, then it circles back around. And if I go in and modify a file, then it becomes uh, modified. And I can go back then and stage it and commit it. So let's just work with that for a minute. So I'm untracked, so let me track it. There's two ways to track. Uh, I can either add the file name individually. Or I could do git add dot. And git add dot just adds everything. And we'll look at that here in a minute. So now if I were to look at my file, uh, it's, uh, it's being tracked. All right, I've got a new file. Uh, it hasn't been committed yet. So I have tracked it. I'm going to stage it with the exact same command, git add. This time I'm going to use dot, just kind of uh, stage them all. And then finally I'll git commit. And usually the first commit just calls your initial commit. You're just setting things up. And now I can see I have a commit. I've got a hash value. I've got the author. I've got the date and time. And now if I were to come in here. Um, actually, let's look at the directory. So nothing to commit. So everything's being tracked, but everything's committed and the working, the working tree is clean. So if I come in here now and I add my name, so I've just modified that file, right? If I come back here. Now the nice thing about git bash is you have command history so I can use the up arrow and the down arrow. So I have tab for auto completion and then I have command history. If I press the up arrow, I can see the previous commands that I've run and down arrow, I can go through them so I can move through them. I modified it. I see here it's modified. So let me stage it with git add and then let me commit it. If I were to come in here and create a new file. I can see that it's not tracked. So now it's being tracked. It's staged. And it's committed. Then if I were to come in here and modify this again, I can see that Mike's been modified. It's staged. And I can see that I have a few commits in here now. So this is just basically working with um, with Git, logging, uh, Git log, Git status, those kinds of things. And remember, I'm working with everything locally. 
So the next thing I want to do is create a remote repository and add this uh, or push this local work up to the remote. So I'm going to use GitHub. I'm going to come in here and create a new repository. Since I've created it locally and I want to push it up, uh, let's see. So first I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a, just a very short description. Um, public or private. If everything that you do in this class needs to be public. Uh, all the homework stuff that you do needs to be public so that I can see it. I can see your work. Um, if you're working on things that you don't want other people to be able to see, you would set it to private. So uh, if you're doing some of your own work uh, outside of class or something like that, you would set it to private. Now, since we have created the repository locally and we want to push it up here, we're not going to initialize it. So we're going to leave that blank and we're just going to simply create the repository on GitHub. And when I do that, it takes me uh, here and I get this URL. That's the URL to the repository. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to come to get and I need to add that uh, repository. So get remote add origin. So I'm adding a remote repository. That's the add remote origin uh, so that's going to be like the remote master uh, and then I need to, to put the URL in there if you're going to paste uh, copy or paste and git bash you have to right click and then you can paste and then I'm going to get push origin so I'm pushing to the remote master the local master And it's done. And if I come in here, I can see I have four commits. Uh, I can see the text of the files. I can see the commit messages, who committed them, the hash values, those kinds of things. Okay, now if I come in here, save that. And let me modify this one as well. Save that. I can see both of the tracked files have been modified. I'm going to stage them. And remember, add the dot will do all of the files. So both of the files that have been modified stages both of them. I don't have to type them individually. And then git commit. Actually, I don't want to type all this. I'm going to use my command history. Git push origin master. And I should see five commits here now. Five commits. And if I look at the text, I can see the nonsense that I typed in there. So this is a look at creating it locally to start with and then pushing it to, to um, GitHub. And this is a great, uh, great way to start if you don't have internet access when you're ready to create the repository. So if you're flying somewhere or something like that uh, and you want to do some work, you can create the repository locally. You can track, you can uh, you know commit, do all those kinds of things. And then when you get uh, somewhere where you have internet access again, then you can push out to, to GitHub. Uh, an easier way, if you have uh, access, internet access, would be to, to initialize a GitHub repository. So let me come in here and create a new repository called Homework 0A. I'm going to set it to public. I'm going to initialize and then I'm going to create. Now I've created this repository. I'm going to come in here and get the URL to clone it. So I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to come down here to get bash. Now this is a second project that I'm creating. This isn't the, this isn't a continuation of homework zero. This is homework zero a, it's a completely different project. So if I were to clone it into homework zero, I'm going to have a mess. I'll have uh, my work from homework zero in there, and then I'm trying to push this new 
um, uh, uh, project in, inside of there, and it's going to be it's going to be ugly. So instead, I want to create a new, completely new folder and everything, but I want to do it from the desktop. So let me get out of this homework zero. So cd space dot dot. Now I'm back at the desktop, and if I look at the desktop, I've got my homework zero project. Okay, so this is a new project I'm starting. I'm going to get clone and then paste in that URL. Okay, and now if I look at the projects on my desktop, I have homework zero and homework zero A. So I want to work on homework zero A now, my second project. So I'll CD into homework zero A. Okay, and if I get log, I can see there's already one commit. So when I did that uh, initialize, that initialize will go in and create a commit, and it's called the initial commit. Now there's already an established link between my local um, repository and the remote repository, and the local repository is, has been created for me. So if I come out here, I can see the .git, right? That's, that means that there's a repository in there, and I can see the files. So let me add a new file. Status. I should see an unmodified or an untracked file. Let's track it. Uh, let's stage it and let's commit it. And let me go in here and clean it up. Okay, so I just uh, I just staged it and let me commit it. And if I look at the log, I can see I've made a couple of commits in here. Let me push them up. So git push origin is the remote master. Master is the local master. Okay, and if I come in here, I should see multiple commits into this homework 0A. Yep, three commits. There's the text, so it, it's working correctly. So this should give you a good, uh, a good idea about how to use Git, uh, and then as you get into the assignments, we'll dig, dive into some of the other uh, commands and, uh, and give some more detail.